what's going on? Let's see, what do I have here? see some a couple people um, I've got to uh, bring in a couple uh, let's see a couple diagrams here for the Locrian scale now the, again the Locrian scale is theoretical uh, I mean I, I have used it for if I wanted to create kind of a sinister sound uh, for like a metal thing or a soundtrack or something like that. Uh, I've used the Locri mode, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really follow many rules uh, regarding, you know, <laughs> leading tones or any of that kind of stuff. Cause it's just like, there's no five chord per se. Um, here, I'm going to post it and you'll notice that it is exactly the same as the G scale we started with except it just starts on the leading tone. So here it is, really big, and I'll make it small. Okay, so you'll notice um, there's nothing at the first fret, but we start at the second fret. It's, it's, I mean, it's cool. It's very diminished sound. Not full diminished, but <laughs> half diminished. Um, and then I'll show you, you know, how you can find this scale. It's the same exact way that you would find it if you were looking for the, the, the major scale. You just find that E form and you'll see it right. Here. Boop. All right. Just write this down there. So here's that. So basically what you would do is find the major chord and then just go down a half step. <laughs> so, I mean, I could, I could show you a... Phrygian or Locrian chord progression, but it, it's just not going to be very fun to listen to. It'll be like. <laughs> kind of crazy. Oh, and I've got to go there and. Uh, bluegrass country. Let's see. I've got to go to the. I've been so busy. Oh, my gosh. I didn't get home till late last night. Um. Let's see. The rest of this week is booked, which is crazy. Um, let's see. Video. Videos. So I'll, i got to get rid of all those ads. Sorry, YouTube. I uh, apologize. So that was a, oh yeah, it was a short one too. Uh, monetization. Go to, okay. I don't mind that and after and manage, but dang, why so many ads? I mean, at least you can click past them, right? I'm only going to put two ads on this one. One in the middle, that's it. Because uh, that was such a short one. Today, I've got a session this afternoon, but I'm okay. Uh, I feel like we'll do a little bit of review here over some of these scales. Mm. And I don't think I saved the first lesson on this. Like, if I go here, it was the A Dorian, but... Oh, no, I did. Look, and I was using blue. <laughs> I changed to red, totally unawares. So this is identical to this, except the color. <laughs> and I moved the fret thing. I didn't, what was my thinking here? Let's see. I put second fret there. I don't know why I did that. I could have just moved it up a fret. But it's identical, okay? So G major scale. 
and then F sharp low Korean. Right? So low Korean is just one of those, one of those, uh, well, it is, I call it a theoretical scale. It's a mode. It's technically a mode. There's nothing illegitimate in that proclamation. Oh, dang it. I'm trying to move the, move. There, there we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Bob, uh, Bruce, thank you for being here. John, Bruce is so faithful. Ed, you too. Uh, David, good to see you from Scotland. Okay, that's all right. No no worries. Do your meeting. It's more important than this. Uh, just re read an article in Scientific is Swamp Ash for Guitar Bodies, becoming as rare as Adirondack, Adirondack Red Spruce. Well, that's too bad. Maybe I'll start a swamp ash farm. I wonder how old Swamp Ash has to be. I remember going to the... Uh... I remember going to the um, Taylor factory and seeing all their wood. They had all the wood sitting outside, you know, uh, being rained on and baked and everything because uh, they wanted it, you know, you got to have... You can't take a, cut down a tree and make a guitar out of it the same day. Um, hey, Charlie. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't know if there's a swamp ash, to be honest. Um, this is a 54 reissue. Um, I actually had an American telly that, that Beth bought me for my birthday, um, which I actually think I picked out. I can't really remember. I think I'm pretty sure I picked it out. I think she just went and got it or something. I don't know. Um, but, uh, at some point shortly after that, my friend Scott, and this actually was at Voltage. So when, or no, Route 66 Guitars in Hollywood. So he opened Route 66 Guitars in Hollywood before he moved to Pasadena. And, um, which is funny because yeah, Pasadena, Colorado Boulevard, which is the main drag through Pasadena is Route 66 and Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood is Route 66. I'm pretty sure. Sunset Boulevard is Route 66. Um, but anyway, Scott had this one there. And my American-made telly had a, a rosewood fingerboard. So it didn't quite have that spank that Maple has. I was kind of looking, you know, looking for something. Like... You know, something that... I could do some pedal steel licks on, you know, have that that country twang. Um, and then I had Norik put in a, he put in a four. Four way switch. Which I don't know what it does. <laughs> Imagine some kind of phasing thing, you know, that allows the, the, uh, Get that nice bright tone on. So I actually traded an American telly for a Japanese telly. But the thing about the Japanese tellies or the Japanese uh, fenders is they're very, very well made. And they did reissues of like every year. Like the, in the U.S., they would make a 52 reissue and they would do a, a 62 reissue. But in Japan, they did like 52, 52, 54, 54. And the only difference between like a 50, uh, 52 and a 54 is that instead of having seven screws, it's five screws or something silly like that. But they're like, no, no, we have to do a very, we have to do an issue reissue of that one too, because it only has the five screws on the pick guard. And so, uh, but it's, this thing has been a, a break. This is Alex's favorite guitar of mine. He can't wait for, for me to die so we can get it. I may give it to him before then. I don't know. We'll see. Alex, you watching? <laughs> Um, so <laughs> let's talk about the low green scale. So low green scale is, or a, is a mode that starts on the seventh degree of the major scale, which is the leading tone. 
Uh, the problem with low grade scale is that the the fifth is the, of all of them. Like if we can, if we go up and harmonize the uh, major scale. See, I'm playing the major scale on the bottom string. See that G A B C D E F sharp G. This is actually a good exercise. Um, you can you can harmonize it, um, and so if I harmonize it with fifths. All the first six would be power chords. But when we get to the when we get to the seventh degree of the scale, there's no C sharp in the key of G, so we have to go to C, and that creates a tritone. So that's the only uh, note in the in the key in, in the key uh, in the scale that has a tritone for a fifth harmony. So I can do third harmonies. So that would be a major third, minor third, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. I could do fourths. See the, the C, the four de fourth degree has a, an augmented fourth. It's kind of a weird harmony. Um, also, you know, I could do six, I could do seconds. Like I said, it's a good exercise. You could do ninths. I mean, when I wrote Home to Mama for Bieber, it was like... I was, I was using ninths and, and thirds. It was a third, uh, it's basically a third. Ninth to ninth. So, uh, let's see, what else have we got? Oh, hey, Julie. First time here. This is great. So are you a, a new subscriber or have you been a subscriber for a while or? Welcome to the, um, they're going to bug you now for a minute. <laughs> they're going to give you all the info. We have a drinking game. Okay, we, we play a drinking game here. So make sure you have some kind of uh, liquids handy. You know, in my case, it's the Starbucks. Um, but uh, if I touch my face, which is poor, is a COVID no-no, it's funny because I was just doing a, uh, I had a session, uh, I've been, I'm working all week for a certain person and. Uh, somebody posted a picture and it were like 15 of us. And none of us were wearing masks. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> we're going to get grief. Yeah, there, oh, Dennis is posting. OK, Dennis has them here. If I touch my face, it's the Tom, Tom command sips. Uh, it started out with not even two or three. If I refer to myself in the third person, if I say I had a band in high school called something, uh, if I change guitars, we take a sip. If I leave the room, we take a sip. If I say, where is it? If I say there won't be a quiz on this or there won't be a test on this, okay? This is my mug here. If I say that, um, then uh, that's a celebratory sip. Uh, yeah, you've got them all here. If I drop a pick, that's a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, that's two sips. Because you really should never drop a thumb pick. But the reason it's a rule is because I actually did it. So... You know, we had to we had to make it a rule. So um, if there is a quiz on it, you have to reverse a sip. And I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. Should a quiz occur? Uh, so make sure you have something to drink. Uh, some of our European friends may have uh, frothy libations, but uh, I, uh, this is morning in America. So <laughs> we're going to have we're going to have uh, Starbucks here or, or something similar. Yeah, so the, the low Korean thing is, and so Julie, you're jumping in on the most bizarre mode of all seven of them. And basically, um, just in review, um, and I and I, again, <laughs> review of the review, I did not intend this to be a modes lesson. I've already taught modes. I really, all this was was a, a, an opportunity to show you some scale shapes that uh, are all in the key of G. Ah. 
that are all positional in different positions. First, uh, second position, then we went to the fourth position, then we were in the seventh position, then we were in the ninth position, then we were kind of in the 11th, 12th position, so on and so forth. Now we're kind of in the second position technically again. Um, and so the idea was to show you, okay, here are all the notes. Basically what it is, all it is, is here are all the notes in the key of G right here. Here are all the notes in the key of G here. Here's all the notes in the key of G here. And they create a, a scale shape that you can memorize. Um, and the great thing about guitar in general, uh, but also a great thing about all of these scales, is if you learn the scale, like say, for example, we learned the uh, D-Mixolydian one. Which would have been, let's see, I have it right there. Um, that one, it's totally movable. So if you learn one of these scales, you've really technically learned 12. Because here's D, Mixolydian. Here's D flat, Mixolydian. Here's C, Mixolydian. Got we don't take sips when the teacher makes a mistake because you'd be out of fluids within 10 seconds. So, uh, but anyway, that my point is you can move these scales all over the place. So I'm, I'm showing you essentially seven different scales, although, you know, the, the B um, Phrygian is identical basically in, in uh, shape to the C um, uh, Lydian. Um, but uh, uh, but basically, by showing you these seven shapes, you've actually learned 84 scales. Um, and that's true with pentatonics. That's true with anything you do on the guitar that does not contain an open string. If I, if I find a cool chord that I really like that has an open string in it, say, for example, I take the C chord and add the pinky up here and I move this up to D. Okay, that would be a D4 chord. But because it has an open string, that suffix doesn't move with the chord. But if I if I play a G minor ninth like this, then this is G sharp minor ninth, this is A minor ninth, this is B flat minor ninth. Okay? So these would all be minor ninth chords because there are no open strings. If I move this D shape up a fret and play the open G string, now it's just if I, I now I have to reanalyze it and, and go, okay, what does this G string do to the the rest of the chord? And you know, what is it in relationship? Well, it's nothing. It's just a third of that chord. So so this would just be an E flat chord. This is a D4 chord. This is an E flat chord. And I'm, I'm out of tune, sorry about that. And then if I moved it down a fret to D flat, I mean what the heck is that? No. It's kind of cool. It's a with a sharp eleven or sharp, yeah, sharp eleven. It's kind of a cool sound, uh, but it's not a four chord like it would be here. So, all right, let me get a tuner on here and see. I think I packed up my tuners. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah. And, and uh, if you're familiar with Discord, you know, let me post a link here, and this link should try to make it so it doesn't expire. But uh, everything, in fact, I, I need to post these diagrams. So every diagram um, that I, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Here, where's this? Okay, here we go. Invite people. Set this link to never expire. You like how I read everything to you? All right. So, um, and don't hesitate to like this live stream. Um, there's a live stream. Uh, there's a live stream. I'm sorry. There's a there's a, um, a Discord, and on the Discord, I will put any paperwork I create here. I'll upload there. I'll scan it and upload it. Um, any diagrams I create. So you can go ahead and download all those. Create your own little you know Word docs if you want to have like five scales on a page or ten scales on a page, and then print them up all you want. You know, um, it's all fair game. Um, and uh, so that's. And then also, uh, you can see uh, Bruce is making me a, a cigar box guitar. And if you don't know what that is, there's uh, Tom's, what is it? Oh, Tom's CBG build. That's cigar box guitar build. 
And so he's been posting pictures. When was the last time you posted a picture there, Bruce? Okay. Uh, well, it's been about a month, but, um, oh, no, no, that's you. That's someone else. Bruce, here you go. Yeah, about a month. Um, and Bruce, you're having troubles with the, the fret markers. You don't, you know, you can just paint dots on there. <laughs> it's not like my thumb's going to be there very much. Uh, if you want to just, you probably already started the process, though, so I hate to, you know, but you were saying you were having trouble with the um, uh, the fret mark. Oh, I've got a tuner around here. Okay, here we go. Um, so, but the low green scale, you know, like, a, ooh, I'm getting a weird sitar sound out of my G-string. I wonder what's going on here. It's weird. You know, I, I, uh, one time I had a, a issue with my, uh, an Ibanez that Alex has now. It was like when my really nice Strat got stolen at a club, I had a vintage Strat that got stolen at a club. Um, I had no money. And so I had, the only guitar I could buy was this Ibanez guitar. It was a real bummer. And, um, I was having troubles with it. It would like, I play one note and it would sound out of tune. I'm like, how is that even possible that one note can sound out of tune? And what it was, I took it into the store and he goes, oh, check this out. And he, my pickups were, were too high. So there was something about the pickups and the height of the pickups that was creating this weird oscillation that made the string sound like it was out of tune. So it's, you know, there's smarter people on this, <laughs> on this chat than me that can explain why that might be the case. But anyway, still getting there. Um, so like I said, low cream is one of those ones that might be a good one if you wanted to create something kind of sinister. Sound. You know, that, you know, it's very, it's, it's fun. I mean, I, like I said, the way, if I were to do a chord progression to play over this and it, you remember the one where we did where the bass note stays the same and the chords, is that, that's, that's not here. It's, is it this one? I think I deleted it. I did. Okay. Um, but if I were to do that uh, in, for Locrian, it's, it's, uh, uh, Joe Satriani's trick, where what he would do is take the four and the five of the root chord, okay? So that doesn't change with all of these different modes. The four and the five of the root chord, the root chord, I mean, the root chord is G, the root key is G. The four and five are C and D, okay? The four chord. So we got C, D, or C, D, or C. Here. I need to restrain. So C D, but then you put the root of the scale, the, the mode that you want to play over in the bass. Well, in this case, that would be F sharp. So that would be kind of an intrinsically low Korean sounding chord progression to practice your low Korean scale. And I've done that. I, I don't know if I have F sharp low Korean up, but I do put low Korean up there. Uh, I have a bunch of jam tracks, okay, that are modal jam tracks. And I did low Korean jams. And those are the ones that actually get the most spins because there are not very many low Korean jams up there. But also I get a lot of people saying, that's not low Korean jam. That's just G major. You know, it, you... And I'm like, well, listen to the bass. But a lot of times if they're listening to a laptop, they can't hear the low bass because I put the bass too low or something. Um, and so uh, you don't really get the sense of this. So that's kind of a cool... You know, so what I'm doing is I'm doing C to G or C to D, C, D, C, D, 
with an F sharp in the bass. And that gives you kind of, and here's, oh, sorry, here's that, here's the mode, the F sharp low grain. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this together. Hey, we, if you're on acoustic, you're golden because we're just going to be down here at the second fret. No more up here at the 12th fret for you. So, so put your first finger on the bottom string, second fret, and we're going to go second, third, fourth. And then we, again, we have some symmetry or redundancy. We're going to go second, second, uh, sorry. So first finger, second finger, fourth finger, first finger, second finger, fourth finger. So two, three, five, two, three, five. That's kind of a cool, it's actually kind of a cool sound, but there's, you know, it's like. <laughs> it's perfect for Halloween, right? So, what, Saturday's Halloween. So if you want, you can set up your amp, crank the reverb, and then sit out, you know, like, sit behind the door. So when the kids come to the door, you can be like. <laughs> get all low crane on them. Okay, so that's the start of it. You got that? Two, three, five, two, three, five. Referring to frets, not fingers, unless you have five fingers. Okay. And then we're gonna finish off with two, four. Now here's where, when you get to that moment on that F sharp, it wants to go to the G. It wants to resolve. That's the thing about low Korean. It doesn't really ever want to stay low green. It wants to just go to major. You're like. It wants to go to that root chord. Because you're landing, your root chord in low green is a leading tone. Leading tone implies that you're going somewhere. Um, but again, what do I always say about music? Songwriting in particular, um, uh, but soloing, whatever. It's a lot about creating tension. Creating tension and then resolving it, okay? Uh, sometimes the more tension you create, the more the more pleasant the resolution is, you know? And if I just go, that's a pretty strong 5-1 resolution, the A to D. But then if I add the sharp 9 and a sharp 5 and a 7, you know, it ends up creating more tension. And then, whoa, that's nice. <laughs> so, uh, and then you can delay that tension. You can play it. You can go, you know, for five minutes on that and drive your audience insane. And then finally, the last chord. Goes, <laughs> so, I love doing that though with people like at church. Sometimes I'll just like and put my guitar down. <laughs> so, that's kind of what low cream feels like, right? It feels like an unfinished scale. <laughs> All right, see you later. You want to hear that G. And that's the same thing. So. Hey, Holly, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I kind of like it. I like low grand. It's fun to kind of... Um, right around for something as far as being a usable key for a, for example, for a pop song, which is what I'm working on all week. I'm, I'm in the studio working on uh, pop songs. Um, you know, I, I'm not seeing how that maybe is going to happen. So, um, okay. So let's continue though. Let's finish the scale out. And then I'm going to, we're going to do kind of a review of some of these scales. Okay. So, uh, so second fret, and the nice thing about there's no position shift in this, okay? That's the beauty of this one. It's all right here in the second position. So we have, so I'm just, just going to say fingers, okay? One, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. And then we're going to have, we're going to skip the one this time, go two, four, and then our root is here, okay? on the uh, one, so on the top string, on the second fret, first finger, one, and then, again, it wants to resolve to that G note. Oh, 
oh, the Meyer, Paul Meyer, that's I'm a, one of my best friends in high school was Paul Meyer. And uh, that, but the spelling you have is not the spelling that's Myers in in Michigan. There's a lot of Myers in Michigan. Okay. Well, good to see you, Paul. Welcome. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> it just cracks me up. We're getting all these newbies, and I'm talking about the freaking Locrian scale. What, it's just ridiculous. Okay. Now let me let me let me go back to the first one here. So here's the G scale. So if we just start on the second finger, now we go two, four, and again I'm talking fingers, not frets here. Two, four. So line up your first finger with your second fret, and that's called position playing. Okay. When they say, oh, play it in the fifth position, that means your first finger is assigned the fifth fret. They say, oh, play it in the seventh position. That means put your first finger, your first finger gets all the notes at the seventh fret. And then technically your second finger would get all the notes at the eighth fret. Your third finger would get all the notes at the ninth fret. And your pinky would get all the notes at the tenth fret. Sometimes, though, you need to move. You need to go down one. You need to go up one. It just depends. It doesn't always, because we don't, we don't have access to every single note right here with four fingers. If I went five frets, now I have access to every single possible note, A, B, you know, A, A sharp, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D flat, you know, and so on and so forth. They're all in here, but not in here. They're all in here, but not in here. Does that make sense? They're all in here, but not in here. If I'm only covering four frets, um, I don't have access to every single note, but sometimes it doesn't matter. And in the case of this, the G diatonic, G major diatonic, it doesn't matter. We have two, second finger on the third fret. So two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. And there's our full octave. Again, one, three, four, two, four, and then one, two, four. And maybe go back to that. So let me just put up a little, I think I did a minor jam or something like that. So with this, what's this? I played there was in that that scale shape okay um, and I was playing over an E just a simple E minor chord if I were to play over a more uh, is this the progression here no that's E minor C Even heavy metal in its core should be beautiful harmonically. Um, so play along with me here. Let's let's pick out some notes and sit on them and listen to it again. We've done this before. Uh, let's play the B, the B right here, fourth fret of the third string, and listen to the tensions, tensions and release. See, there's tension over the D chord. No tension over the E minor because that's part of the E minor chord. Tension over the C because it's, it wants to go C. There's a B and a G chord, so there's no tension. Hear how that wants to go down? 
So a lot of times if there's tension, um, you can find that note if you just go up or down one note in the scale. B is a perfect example of that. See, I'm going down one scale. Yeah, F sharp is the leading tone in the key of G. So I'm going to C here. Let's sit on the F sharp here in a second and see how it works. F sharp's gonna be weird. Here's the F sharp right here. I love it though, on the E minor, that's the second. Woo, that's tension. But here's not tension. That's in the D chord. Okay, so that so to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here theoretically. Oh, I gotta let me close this uh, Discord because it's gonna beep at me. Um, what I'm talking about here is what what's fascinating. You know, so many people think, oh, I gotta play really fast. I gotta play a lot of notes if I'm gonna play a guitar solo. No, uh, I think it. The, I, I think simpler is better. I think beautiful is best. Um, even you, you, like I said, even in a heavy metal song, I, I want I want to hear something interesting, um, and so over. I've got four chords here: E minor, C, G, and D. Right. Okay, and so. Each one of those chords, those are all triads, so, meaning they have three notes in them. Okay, E has E, G, B. Um, those are the three notes, three notes in the E, G, B, in, in the E minor. So if I play an E, a G, or a B, it's going to sound what I would say I would call inside, meaning it's going to be like, oh, okay, that's that's safe and warm inside the house. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to come up with an analogy for uh, allegory for in, playing an inside note, but those notes are going to be safe. Okay, um, and the C chord has three notes also, C, E, and G. Well, notice, if we were to look at the, um, and I can, I can write this out here, I want to see, check this out. I can get rid of, okay, so what I'll do is I'll go boom, like this, go E, G, B, and then we've got the C chord, and that is C, E, G, and you don't need to understand right now why, okay? I did a series on chord theory. This is 100, what, 129th lesson since COVID. So, um, oops, no, no space, okay. All right, so you can see all of the, uh, uh, oh, it's funny, I'm, why am I an A Dorian? That's so funny, I'm gonna get rid of that. <laughs> it shouldn't say a door in there. All right, let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, however, I wouldn't mind having all the notes that we need, we have access to. So let me put that up here. Okay. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. These are all the notes that are in the key of G. Okay. Um, so you can see, in fact, the way it just lines up, the E and the G of the E minor and the C are the same. Uh, if you look at uh, E minor and G, they have two notes in common as well. If you look at G and D, they have one note in common. But D is kind of the outlier. D is the chord that has two notes that aren't in any of the other chords. Okay, so you can just kind of look at those things and go, okay, you know, you don't have to 100% understand it. But these are the triads, E minor, C, G, and D. And um, uh, 
Yeah, I think I have, Bruce, I think I have like 570 video. I don't know. I'll have to look. <laughs> it's crazy. It's insane. Um, and uh, I also posted in the Discord, I posted a list of the lessons and which one. So if you want to learn the modes, I think that's like lesson 13 through 17 or something like that. No. What was the first lessons I did? That was, was that, mo what was the first thing I did? Was that modes? Gosh darn it. No, modes would have been. Yeah, that could have been, I'm forgetting it all now. Uh, it's been too long. So when I'm playing, um, you, if I play an F sharp over all four of those chords, you can see it's only gonna be inside on the fourth chord, right? It's gonna create tension in those other ones. F sharp is just really right next door to G and a little above E. So if I'm playing F sharp over E minor, I could go, down to E, or I could go up to G. Same thing with the C chord. If I'm playing F sharp over the C chord, I've got two options here. I can go down to E, or I can go up to G if I want to go from being outside to being inside. Oh, I'm using air quotes. That's a sippable offense. <laughs> so just so you know, if I use air quotes, quotes, you get to take a sip. Nobody caught me, but... Okay. <laughs> so, um, and then on G, I could go, there's no E in G, so the F sharp's really going to want to resolve to the, to the G. When you add an F sharp to that G major, it's G, B, D, creates kind of a G major 7 sound, which is fine, but then if, if there's a G in this note in there, and I'm playing this note, it's going to sound like this. It's going to be dissonant, but that's okay. Again, that dissonance, that being outside creates tension that gets resolved when you go inside. So check this out. I'm going to put the jam in, and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing here. It's F sharp, going down to E. F sharp, this time I'm going to go up to E. And see, there's, I'm playing F sharp, but that's in a D chord. jam it's not going to work but if it's a multi-chord jam uh even two chords that note is going to sound like it's changing but it's not staying the same even a g note if i'm playing the key of g it's the fifth of this chord it's the root of this chord and it's the fourth of the d chord and it wants to go it wants to go down to that f sharp but g is in the e minor right and there's a g in the c chord and there's a G and a G chord, of course. along with what you're playing. Also, it will help to connect your head to your hands. And then that is a huge advantage because then at that point, any melody you hear in your head, I can't get my window, so here we go. Any melody you hear in your head, you can eventually be able to get it into your hands. And eventually on the fly. You don't need to resolve it, John. I mean, it's up to you. That's the, see, you're the solo. So watch, I'll play the E. Works great over E minor, right? Works great over C. Woo. 
doesn't work over the Jeep. It wants to. It doesn't work. Now I'm going up to the F sharp. Woo, beautiful. A lot of tension, though. Also, space is good, too. Space creates tension. If I play nothing, people are like, why isn't he playing something? It makes them nervous. It's, it's music is 100% manipulation, and you're just using all the tools. If I don't want to, if I want to tell a joke instead of playing a guitar solo, then that's creating tension too. If I want to go up to the mic and say, you know, say hey, you know, uh, knock knock. All right. Pirate. Okay, uh, I'll pick another note. Let's A is a weird one because A is not going to really fit in any of these chords except the D chord. D is a good note though because D creates a seventh over the E minor. And again, John, you can go, you can resolve it, but but not stay there. Okay, so for example, the E note the, in over the E minor chord, that D wants to go up to E, right? And same thing with the D note over the C. But over the G, it wants to stay there because there's a D in the chord. And over the D, of course, there's a D in the chord. So it works. But you don't have to... See, if I go to the E minor, okay, cool. It tells everybody I know what I'm doing, right? You give them some some confidence in you. You remove the tension from the room that you don't know what you're doing. Okay? But you can just hint at it. Right? I just hinted at the, the inside note and stayed on the outside note. Now I'm going, staying on the outside and hinting the inside. I mean the other one. Okay, so you can, you can pick out any note in the scale and sit on it um, and just enjoy the tension. And like I said, when you, when you do that, um, that note will have a different value. Let me check this out. So when I play... Um, when I play, let me change guitars. So you can take a sip because I'm changing guitars. Hopefully I'm in tune. Okay. When I play the F sharp over the E minor chord, I'm, I'm creating kind of an E minor second chord. That's the second. When I do it over the C chord, it's a, ma a sharp 11, which is a beautiful, you know, it's a very manipulative tone. Film scores use it all the time. Uh, if I play the, the, the F sharp over the G chord, I create a major seventh. That's a major seventh there. And then over the D, it's a third. So check it out. This is an F sharp over all four chords. Okay? I'm going to tell you what note it is. F sharp. Whoops. No, that wasn't. F sharp. F sharp. F sharp. Okay, but its relationship to the chord is different every time. Second raised fourth or sharp 11 major seventh third okay it's like the jazz the little jazz kind of cadence ending whatever what I'm doing here is I'm basically taking doing this down the fretboard and I'm making sure that the top note of that is always a G note Okay, and that G has a, it's the same G every time, but it has a different relationship to the rest of the chord. Here it's a flat five, here it's a five, here it's a sharp five, here it's a six, here it's a flat seven, here it's a major seven, here it's the root, 
and finally sounds inside, but not until then. All right, it's a trick. It's just a trick, and it's it's it's. I love it because it's it means you don't have to be super fancy to solo. You don't have to have a lot of technique to create. Essentially, what you're doing is you're spontaneously creating a new piece of music when you when you play a, a solo. Okay, um, and that, and you know, I mean, I don't uh, I don't do a lot of pop like on pop records. That's kind of a passe. Well, it's, it hasn't been done in years. <laughs> I have done it actually. <laughs> I told you a story about the when I uh, did that song with Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift, and I flipped this. <laughs> they brought me back into. They liked what I did, and they brought me back in to, <laughs> to put a, a guitar solo on. And I went, what? A guitar solo on a pop song? What, what, this is not, you know, beat it with Michael Jackson. And, and I, I said, how long do you want me to solo? And she, they go, eight bars. I go, eight bar guitar solo? Really? That's a lot of guitar solo. And they said, okay, we're making it 16. <laughs> so me, uh, the producer, and Justin came up with 16 bar guitar solo. <laughs> Uh, Richard, I do have an Instagram account. Yes, sir. Uh, it's the Straley, not Tom Straley or T Straley. Those were already taken. It's a the Straley, but I have it set. I have to approve you. I have a, I, I, I don't like. I don't. I, my my Instagram is mainly just for family. Keep tabs on family stuff like that. Um, but story time. No, not yet. I don't, I don't, I have to, I have to come up with a story, Holly. So, um, so there was the diatonic. Now at the, at the fourth fret, technically really more at the fifth fret, you had uh, the e, the A Dorian. And again, the, the two diagrams here, here, the top one, the blue notes are, and I changed to red for some reason, but the blue notes those are the roots. Those are all A's right there. Okay. And you can see the blue note and then there's a two frets to the next note and then a one fret. So it's, you can see that because of that ABC thing, it's a, it's a minor scale. Um, and then the second diagram, the lower one, the reason all those notes are blue is so you can see the D shape. Do you see that D shape right there? So this scale is built around the D shape. We're, if we're talking about uh, cage method. Oh, that's what I started on. Bruce is probably yelling at me. You just started on the cage method. Um, yeah, you can post a selfie there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it, yeah. Uh, the follower. It's it's a it's a. Let me post the link again. Oh, I think I have it right here. Right In this. Yep, there's a Discord link. So that's an invite. So you guys can join that. Um, uh, so you can see the D shape there in the A Dory. Okay, now if I go to the next one, it should be B Phrygian. Uh, yeah, see, I kind of, I kind of screwed up. But that's uh, okay. So there is no fret on this top one. Okay, this top diagram here, up there, there is no fret number. That should be the seventh fret, and I, that is intentional. I changed it and I deleted the other two, but. Um, and then here down below, I, I showed you where the G scale is in this. I think if I have the, no, I didn't. So we don't, so this scale here um, at the seventh fret is uh, both the um, B, the B um, uh, Phrygian scale and the C Lydian scale. It's a very cool, it's a very cool scale. Lydian's a great scale. Phrygian, Phrygian is another one of those ones that's kind of like, it's slightly darker than a minor scale. But it's not low green. It's not as dark as low green. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. So, um, 
-hmm. So the, the, that was two more scales. And then we did, and you can go back and watch these videos. Then we did demixolydian. The mixolydian scale was is one that we might spend some time on. Because what I'd like to do is I'd like to mm -hmm. show you like G mixolydian, this, this shape right here moved down to G. So. Mm -hmm. But move it down to G. So I'm playing G mixolydian. Then learn C mixolydian right here. And then D mixolydian right here. And if you learn all of those, then, then if you're playing over the blues. Then you can then you can switch between the the different scales without ever leaving this position and that's kind of, so let, check this out i'll try to play mixolydian scales and see if you can tell when the chord changes okay <laughs> So basically, you can kind of what I'm trying to do is uh, the difference between G and the, don't worry, there's no quiz on this. Take us take a sip. <laughs> there won't be a quiz on this. Don't be scared. Just trust me. But the difference between G mixolydian and C mixolydian is one note, and the difference between G mixolydian and D mixolydian is also one note. Um, and so what you try to do when you're going back and forth, the difference between G mixolydian. And C mixolydian is a G mixolydian has a B in it. And the C mixolydian has a B flat in it. So when I you heard me do that, you went. As soon as I went to that B flat, it was implying the C7 chord or the C mixolydian. Okay. And then, and then I went back to, I went back to that B. As soon as you heard that F sharp, you knew, oh wait, that's, F sharp's not in G mixolydian. Even though you didn't know that, you, you, your ear knew it. And you go, oh, he must be playing over the D chord. Anyway, so that that might be the next series that I do. I don't know. That may be pretty advanced, but I would love for you to be able to go, even if it was just a matter of playing G mixolydian all the way through G chord, and then when it changed to C, you went to, oh, okay, I'll go to C. That's kind of the exercise. And then back to G mixolydian. D mixolydian. C mixolydian. G mixolydian. Back to D mixolydian. Um, to follow the chord progression in the blues, which is basically just a 1 4 5 progression. All right. I'm getting a glare on my screen, so I can't see what you're saying. Uh, -ba 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 -ba. Um, let's see. Um, okay, what did Bob say? Eh. I'll follow with Shem. I guess, uh, yeah, the, the Discord, you could kind of call it a... Uh, where's the best place to start? Well, uh, you know, if you look at uh, Julie, the... Uh, let's see, where's, the, oh, I closed it. Oh, I had to close it because it was beeping. It was bloop, bloop. 
Uh, what is it? Discord. And at some point, I may migrate over to Twitch. I haven't decided. I've got a bunch of people that are doing Twitch stuff. Okay, if you go to the... Uh, is it Tom's text chat channel? Is that where I put that list of all the... Yeah, so you can see... Oh, oh, you copied it. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. So you can see... Um, lesson... You can see the lessons there. Um, on the Tom's text chat channel of all these different tabs on the left. Um, and those, it says lesson one through 12 is the cage method, 13 through 17 of modes, uh, 18, 19 of chord, th chord theory. I continued with chord theory, but I got kind of sidetracked with circle of fits because I uh, wanted to talk about that. So chord theory actually goes on for, let's see, two lessons there, and then four lessons there, and then three lessons. So, so what is that? <laughs> Two plus four plus three is nine lessons. And I talk about finger picking. And I think we used the Giuliani method for that, for some of that. That was 13 lessons. And then blues basics, I did 10 lessons. And strumming and grooving, I did another 11. I mean, I was just like, what should I talk about now kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so you can, you can go to my uh, live stream channel. So there should be a tab on my in my video, you know, it's hard because if, do I, if I go to my channel, um, let's see, if I go to my channel, what does it look like? Okay, hold on, it's gonna play something. Oh no, okay. Um, so videos, yeah, so if you just click on the videos tab, you can see all the lessons there, and it'll say lesson number one, number two, blah, blah, blah. And I try to put everything in caps there. Um, and then if you just click on home, you can see different uh, channels or playlists there. Basics, open tunings, cool tools, cool skills, business of making music, strumming and grooving lessons. I try to put my most popular um, playlist there because I only I have a limit to how many I can put there but then you can click on playlists and see all those the funny thing is I have my playlists are in here too my private ones which is hilarious because I'm like wait I wish I could hide those like I've got playlists about brick lane because <laughs> when we bought this house it has a ton of brick and I figured I better learn a little bit about how to lay bricks because I'm going to be in trouble right now but that's one place the other thing you can go to is uh, Tom's bookmarks, which has uh, all of the diagrams. In fact, let me upload these new ones here. And they are now uploaded. So both those, these here, I'll show you, these two diagrams right here, the two F-sharp F Locrian ones are now up here on the Discord on the Tom's bookmarks. Um, I don't know what all of these, well, general chit chat is all what it says. And I'm not on here very often, but people, people, everybody, hey, Julia's here, uh, Jules, uh, Dennis, oh, that's you, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Gary, yeah, we, everybody, you know, checks in from time to time. A lot of times, uh, if I'm late, <laughs> people get on, you get on Discord, like, is Tom not doing it today? I generally will try to let you know. I have a Facebook page, too, so I will post uh, on my YouTube community page, my channel community page, uh, yeah, and I can delete this one now. Like, some of these, are, like, if I say I'm not gonna, yeah, see, I need to put dates on these, so, <laughs> so but the, um, on my Facebook page, on my community tab, and then I should, tr I sometimes try to say something in the Discord, too. Um, and Bruce will sometimes help me there. Uh, will be, you know, like he'll he'll notice on my Facebook page that I said I'm not going to be there, and he'll make sure that everybody on the Discord knows, because it generally tends to be the same people every um, every 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 live stream. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the. I mean, you can.
can have fun with a load screen. I think it's kind of fun. And like I said, it's kind of scary. So it's perfect for Halloween. It's the, it's perfect Halloween scale. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate that, Max. You know, and again, I think we can take it in snippets too. I, you know, me, I like to do things like I might even just do like, okay, what are the notes on these uh, two strings, the middle two strings, because that would accommodate all of those options. Here's the here's the notes in G mixolydian. Here are the notes in C mixolydian, and here's the notes in D mixolydian. And that would be pretty cool because you could solo a pretty cool solo just using those two strings. The hard part is keeping track of when the chords change. And we talked about this with blues. Really, the thing you've got to do before you really even attempt to play to solo over the blues, okay? Really, what you need to do before you do that is you need to play the blues progression a thousand times. <laughs> I know that sounds like a pain in the butt. In fact, if you can't play it 10 times in a row without messing up, and because the blues is a weird progression, and a standard blues, you know, it's one, then four, two, uh, one, four, then one, and four, and then one, and then five, four, one, five. It's kind of jumps. It's only three chords in its most basic iteration, and there's lots of different variations on the blues, but the basic iteration is what everybody kind of tends to play. And uh, they may do variations on it, but it's also going to su be supported by the basic. So if you play over the basic iteration, then even if people do some weird substitutions here and there, it's still going to work. And the blues is really common even in jazz. So there are a lot of bebop tunes that are built around blues progressions or a lot of jazz songs that are built around blues progressions. So, But what you need to do is when you do not need to be wondering what the next chord is when you're soloing. You just need to innately know it it needs to be so embedded in you so that's what we that's what we so we if i do change talk about the mixolydian three different mixolydian keys um uh then um and i may call the series like using mixolydian for blues um which is a long name but that's what it is um but if i if i do that we may have to do a whole less the first lesson may just be on look guys you gotta get this blues progression down trust me this is not, I'm not telling you this as a teacher. I'm telling you this as an idiot <laughs> because I did not do that. And so I would play the blues and I'm like, where, where are we? Because it's so easy. It's 12 bar. You don't want to play a 13 bar blues. And if you're playing with someone who's gets lost, okay, and I'm not going to name names, but I've jammed the blues with people and they don't even know the progression well enough to play it. And it's like, if the person is playing rhythm, can't get it, you have no confidence as a soloist that um, uh, you you know what chords you can come in next. Or if it's going to be an 11-bar blues, or is it going to be a 13-bar blues? It should be a 12-bar blues. So that's, we may, we may re-hit on that. So. So it might be kind of fun to do that. Um, so we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Friday. Uh, Friday is our anniversary. So uh, we have some plans. But Beth is working really hard and I'm working really hard. So we're going to delay uh, a trip until probably December sometime. We've um, got so many things coming up. And uh, so we're going to have to find a gap in our schedules. Um, let's see. So any questions? Yes. I saw you, Julie. It's awesome. Uh, and Julie, where are you located? I, I, I think I may have missed that if somebody asked you that question. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and the, and the Bruce is right. It's it's we've had to kind of uh, uh, block or 
exclude certain people that got on and started getting snarky or, you know, were drunk blogging or whatever. <laughs> so don't do that. It's all like, this is all for encouragement. Oh, you're in Alabama. Very awesome. I've been to, I've been to Mobile. Um, my dad lived, lived in Gulfport. Um, but yeah, so, so, uh, which is Mississippi. I know it's not Alabama, but it's, it's cool because Alabama and Mississippi both have little parts that touch the Gulf. So you have some beach area, you know, it's like you got this big state and there's like whoop, the little bit there that, Oh, look, we're going to touch the Gulf, which is awesome. So Florida and Alabama and Mississippi and Louisiana all have Gulf coast, which is cool. So the South. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, so that's, so maybe that's what we'll do next. And that way we can kind of utilize some of this, the diatonic scales that we've been learning. Um, now, what did I, where did I put the, the cool, this stuff? Oh, that's cool. Okay. So that's the thing I wanted to look at, or that's the thing we were doing. Again, we're talking about E minor, C, G, D, the chord progression that's here. Um, and we're talking about different notes and, and, uh, um, I could play any note in that scale and start on G and each note, like G is in the first three chords. And G is not in the last chord, so that's where it's going to have tension. So there's a G in the C chord, it's the fifth. The G of the G chord is the root. And the G of the D, G over D is a D a sus, or a, a four. Okay? So if I go to A, we have a cat. Cat makes an appearance. What you doing, kitty? So A is going to be not in any of the, those first three chords, but over the last one. So check it out. A. See, there's some tension there. <laughs> Sip when the cat makes an appearance. See there, it's inside. So the A is the four of E minor. You can go up to B. The, the A wants to go down to the G and the C. A wants to go up to the B, and then the A is fine over the D chord. Nazia, 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 Abdullah. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm yeah, pretty much yeah, kind of a school teacher here. Oh, I can't. Sorry, Yuri. I can't, I can't play covers because if I play it, uh, then I can't monetize the video. Sorry about that. Okay. So now uh, the next note in the scale, B. B is over the E minor. It's there right there, the fifth. It's the seventh of that C. It's a beautiful note, but it's not in it. And then it's the third of the G chord, and it's the sixth of the D chord. Okay, now let me go for the next note, C. C is going to be... C creates a lot of tension over the E minor. I like it, but now it's the root of the C chord. It's the fourth of the G chord. It wants to go down, doesn't it? Now, C wants to go up over the D chord. It wants to definitely go down over the E minor. It's fine, it's fine over the C. But the C is actually the seventh. So that C note could be kind of cool over the D because it's the seventh. It definitely creates kind of a blues tonality. Okay, a blues tension. Okay, the next note in the scale is D. Obviously going to work over the D chord. It's the seventh of the E minor. Second of the E, a C chord. It's the fifth of the G chord. And it's the root of the D chord. Okay. E is the third, I mean, yeah, the root of the E minor, the third of the C. It's the the sixth of the G and the second. Okay? 
So that that E note works cool and it actually creates some interesting non tensions or some inside stuff and some outside stuff. I love it. And notice I when I played the D, and the E works over both those chords and then over the D G. I still land on the E. I give you a little hint of that E. I just like that. I like just kind of getting in space is always good. Okay? So let's see. Wow, we got a lot of viewers right now. Something, something happened. Okay, let me turn off my jam. So you see, you can go through the scale and each scale tone over a chord progression will have a different effect. Now that's a very, very basic, simple chord progression. That's a blue, that's a very poppy. So um, you can see, you know, that's a that's a common chord progression you might find yourself having to solo over or whatever. Um, yeah, Sai Sai Somish. The uh, uh, oh, you're from Brazil. Cool. Uh, Yuri's from Brazil. <laughs> Sweet child. Sorry, I can't play Sweet Child. I thought, yeah, I because the, the problem is if I it's so stupid. I'll play something. I'll play some of these melodies. I did something where I did E, C, G, D. I played the roots of these chords right here. And YouTube gave me a copyright infringement notice that somebody was claiming that that was their song. And I'm like, you can't claim the root of a chord as a song. And so I disputed it. So that's with something that's clearly not someone else's song. But if I do Sweet Child of the Mind, uh, definitely I'll get, I won't be able to monetize the video or I have to dispute it, or I have to cut out that section. So that's why I don't do that. I don't teach lessons on how to play songs. There's a ton of guys that do that, and I don't know how they do it, to be honest, but I guess what they do is they're doing shared royalties, or they're not getting any royalties at all. They're selling books. That's what uh, Rick Beato says he does. He makes more money off of his books and stuff like that, his programs. But with 2 million subscribers, I know he's making money off of YouTube. Um, so... Um, the, uh, the other question, the chromatic tones. Yeah, hundred percent. You can use chromatic tones. Um, I often will use chromatic tones as a passing tone. Okay. So check this out. Okay. So for example, D is in the key of G and E is in the key of G, but E flat or G sharp is not right. If I played that note, oh shoot, hold on. <laughs> Take a sip. I got someone at the door. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have to cut that bit. I can cut that bit out. <laughs> it was the gardener. You can hear, I don't know if you can hear the gardener. But okay, so about the chromatic tones. So that note, that, that E flat, if I played that E flat over this, it would sound awful. Okay, it wouldn't work. I might be able to justify it. Okay, it doesn't work over the C. It doesn't really work over, now if I was playing a jazz, I could totally... See, these are jazz chords, so these are basic pop chords. But there, I'm just hinting at them. Yeah, I mean, 
creates a certain vibe. Um, I can do it with a A to the B. And in blues, I would use it a lot. Uh, if I were to do a blues here, do I have a blues progression here? Yeah, uh, would I do it in minor? No, that's not blues. Let's see, what's this one? So let me just let me just vamp this. So this is just C. So it's just G seven chord, okay? I'm using a lot of chromatic type. In fact, there's even a, a jazz song uh, called, um, uh, shoot, I can't think of it right now, Blue Monk. It's like... So on that D7 chord, you've got an F sharp. So D7 is D, F sharp, A, and C. If I play it, so I've got a major third and I'm two minor thirds. And the great thing about minor thirds is you got you got four notes right there. So that it's fun to play it there. As far as playing like a pure chromatic scale. I, I wouldn't necessarily do that. But I use chromatics all the time. Uh, so those are an example of, of how you might do it. Alright. Sorry. Annoying. <laughs> One chord vamp. And the gardener. I don't know if you can hear the gardener. <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay. So I don't know if that answers your question at all. Uh, and the name, what, was that Sai that asked that question? Yeah, Julie, I know sometimes the notifications work, sometimes they don't. We got a lot of newbies here though. It's crazy. Ivanka <laughs> Trim. Okay. Uh, uh, Ben stuck when performing vibratos. Um, you're very welcome, Cy. Uh, let's see. How to keep fret honed so not to get bent stuck when performing. I'm not sure exactly what your question is. Uh, I mean, I don't do any of my own guitar tech work. I have my guy do everything. Um, <laughs> But I, one of the hardest things to do as a guitar player is to put vibrato at the top of a bend. Um, and that takes, uh, you know, it, to me, it's more ergonomic. Like that kind, of, that kind of thing. It really does take a lot of pressure. Um, it takes a lot of, of, like, strength and pressure. I think, feel like downward pressure onto the fretboard. To, to be able to, because when I first started doing it, you know, and I, I'm sure you've all experienced this, <laughs> you would start falling down. It's like, da -da -da, you're trying to put vibrato and the, the string is you're like getting lower and lower and lower in pitch, okay? And that's, uh, here, let me, I, get a, I get a big gain sound here. Here we go. That. Yeah, that's really hard. I mean, I think one of the things you want to do is not necessarily hang on to it when you're if you're doing a vibrato at the top of a bend. Um, not to try to hang on to it too long, or you're going to eventually lose it, no matter how good you are. 
little vibrato at the end is nice. It's very vocal, very much like a singer. La, 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 la. <laughs> Not a singer, but obviously. Another thing, uh, si along the lines of, um, uh, along the lines of the chromatic thing, a chromatic could be. Uh, I don't know where you're from, but in, in in the Middle East, I play oud, and they have 54 notes per octave. So there's a note here. They got notes in between our notes, the Western notes. And so when you do a slow, like, that's just really cool, right? Also, another thing about getting a good vibrato on your bend is to get under the string a little bit. I usually go like this and then try to get the string. the question Bruce how do how do you keep frets home, home level so the strings do not catch when bending uh, like uh, so they join together I basically will roll my finger up so that I'm pushing up the string it's hard to see but I'm pushing up the string out of the way of the string I'm bending some guys will do like strings together, but that's not how you do it. Yeah, I had another question. Um, oh, sure. Uh, Sai, you said, can you share some ideas about advanced chord progressions? Um, I, what I would do is here, let me, uh, let's see. Let me go to my um, live stream lesson list here. And I talked about this already. So uh, some of this, not, I don't know if what you would de deem advanced, that's, uh, so I did, uh, let's see, did I do chord progression? So I did lessons 69 through 76 were about chord progressions. And I was think I was talking more about basic like one, six, four, five progressions, things like that. But I also um, talked about um, neighboring chords. So if we're in the key of C, like you wouldn't have a B flat in the key of C, but what if you did have a B flat? What would that mean? How would you use it? Things like that. So I talk about that. Uh, uh, let's see, strings often stick in a fret uh, on its, oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, that I, I don't have any issues with that. I think maybe what may happen is if you're um, using a capo a lot, or if you know you're you're creating divots in your frets, um, I you could maybe get a file that you can file your frets, but you run the risk of then getting your fret too low and then it won't fret. Um, you you'll you'll play like this F here and it'll the F sharp will ring out. So it's, you just never know. Uh, but I don't really have, I guess probably because I don't, I have more than one guitar. So my guitars get in rotation uh, quite a bit. Um, I don't really um, have that issue. Uh, but when I do have a guitar that starts to get pitted out, the, the, the frets get little, I don't know if they have, they would catch a string. I could still bend, uh, but they den generally tend to happen in the lower frets because I'm playing a lot of open chords and things like that. Um, uh, and that would happen on my main strat. I just get it refretted, which is not cheap, and you may not have anybody around you that can do that. So it's a tough question for me to answer because it's not my area of expertise. I am not a guitar repairer guru nor a luthier so I really don't know a lot about that kind of stuff
No, I am not. Uh, it's funny because I've been writing this week. Uh, hey, my Benny, Mr. Benny. Uh, I've been I've been working, and it, you know, it's funny because I'm around. Well, these are the people I've, I'm working with this week. All week are some of the biggest hit writers in the world, and um, uh, and they don't. They're amazing. I mean, I come up with a hook idea, and then they immediately have lyric ideas immediately and melodies and it's like holy cow and we're all just working together there's a bunch of us working uh together and uh and working in different rooms and stuff like that and um it's uh uh it's it's pretty it's pretty fun it's a lot of fun and uh but uh, yeah i don't we don't really use any kind of writing app i mean here here's one trick that i have chris that i i like to do is um Oh, uh, hold on a second. AB has a question. Lately, I've been experimenting a lot with modes in melodic minor scales. I made a lot of tunes in Phrygian number three scale. It's very Eastern. Uh, I don't know. What, tell me what Phrygian, like, for example, give me a Phrygian. What would Phrygian, see, Phrygian sharp three. Oh, I, okay. So Phrygian would be. Uh, so here's Phrygian. So Phrygian. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, I mean, that is, I have to, my brain has to think, that would be, Phrygian sharp three would be the one, two, three, four, fifth, the fifth mode of harmonic minor, right? Uh, yeah, we're, it's, we're getting a lot of people on here, Bruce. Right, it's a do dominant of yeah harmonic minor. Um, yeah, I've used that mostly to sound Middle Eastern, like you said, uh, on the oud especially when I can have a D, you know, like a D drum. Like droning against the root of the scale makes it makes it s seem more centered to me. Um, so I like it for that, but yeah. Yeah, this telly is nice, isn't it, Mr. Benny? Um, okay, so uh, so what was it? So, oh, Chris, oh, about song. So one trick I like to do with um, writing lyrics, um, and, you know, everybody's trying, you know, I always say if you can, I always tell young songwriters, if you can find a new way to say I love you, it's worth a million dollars right there. And so um, most songs are ultimately, most pop songs are ultimately love songs. And if you get into alt country or things like that, no, not necessarily. If you're into folk or songs, are not going to be so much about that. But um, but most pop songs are love songs. And um, uh, I don't. Yeah, we, it's weird. We got we got a couple here. So uh, uh, a a b. Um, I don't know Guitar Pro Seven Point Five. Sorry, Zoom. Um, but what you can do is just find or just take a random word. Okay. Like, um, I don't know. He said, when you say take a random word, then you can't think of one. It's a, it's just like, so file. So it doesn't have to be a fingernail file, but you can think of file or whatever, or a computer file or a, a file box or a file card or something. Okay. Now write a song called file and make it about love. There's a challenge right there. Um, I would say that any song idea thing is going to be maybe a little bit like, okay, well, that's been done before. But writing a love song that's called File, you know, I, I wrote a love song called Yellow Light, Yellow Lights. And it was, I basically was walking down the road and said, okay, I need a, I need a, a, a title for a love song. And um, uh, a song got recorded, but it hasn't been released. But um, basically what I what I made the song about was I, I was walking down the street and a light turned yellow and I said, yellow light. Okay. So the song's called yellow lights or yellow light. Well, how can that be about love? Right? So what I did was it was a country song and I had it. Uh, so the verse was basically about a guy and a girl are driving down the road in two different cars driving side by side. Okay. And um, they, 
the light turns yellow. They come to an intersection where there's a stoplight and the light turns yellow and the guy goes through the light and the girl slams on her brakes. And that is symbolic of their relationship. He's ready to move forward and she's slamming on the brakes. And that's what the song was about. And that was like actually a really, really good lyric. It really, really worked out really well. It was fun. It was fun. And, and we came up with a really good melody and everything. It was actually a really fun song. Uh, but I, it started the whole lyric, the whole concept for the song. The song, there was not a note thought of until I came up with the term yellow light or yellow lights. Um, and uh, it, 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 it was like we all have been there. We've all been in a relationship where we either were moving too fast or weren't moving fast enough. And so that's that was what I uh, thought would be kind of universal about the song. That's what, you know, a good song should be fairly universal. I mean, th there are no rules. Um, I, however, the most formulaic songwriting you can have is worship music for churches, <laughs> because um, it has to be universally true. Uh, like I could sing a song in, in church about, oh, you know, I could say a lyric that, oh, my dad on earth was awful, but my dad in heaven is great. That may not be use, universally true. Some <laughs> My kids think their dad's pretty cool. <laughs> they like their dad. Um, but uh, uh, um, oh, uh, let's see. Oh, that, that, that thing's uh, Irish bazooki. An Irish bazooki. It's, it's kind of tuned like an, a mandolin down an octave, but not quite. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, sorry, Zoom Games. I've never heard of a Guitar Pro 7.5. You know, I'm. Uh, let's see. He owned me with a file of love. <laughs> I love smooth fingernails. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what. what uh, it could be file it away, file it away for later, you know, put it in the file. Uh, let's say you, you meet a girl and uh, that would be pretty damning because if you met, met a girl and she hit on you and you like, OK, I'm in a relationship, but I'm going to file this away. <laughs> That's where you would go with it. That's it's not a good song. It had to be a good. It didn't have to be a. a a nice song. <laughs> it just has to be a true song. I, uh, I wrote, I, Sam Hook, who I write with all the time. He, he's one of the greatest writers. Uh, he who wrote a song and it was called three words. And, and, uh, he, uh, the lyric, uh, you know, you think, Oh, three words. It's a love song. I love you. Those are the three words. And he says, I can break your heart with three words right now. In the, he says, he's, <laughs> the three words are, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, is technically four words, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> but it's it's like uh, you could totally um, you could you you know it's like it was a, it, the song was brutal. I mean, it was a brutally honest song. It was like, dang, that's such an indictment of guys, you know. But he was he was being really honest. Uh, he rub off all my rough edges, yeah. As iron sharpens iron, right? Uh, Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's the Irish bazooki. Yeah, there's a Les Paul in front of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Irish bazooki. Yeah, it's a it's a gold tone. Uh, here, I'll, I'll 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 see. I'll get you the link here. Let's see, so you can check it out. Gold tone. I think I got it at Nam not last year but the year before. Gold tone. I like, you know, I, Gold Tone's great for picking up those extra weird little instruments. I think I got a, got a couple things from them. Oh, I got my guitar, uh, my mandolin guitar, which is cool. You guys haven't seen that, I don't think. Let's see. Products. Uh, technically, would it be mandolins? Yeah, here it is. Bazooki mandolin. So if you want to check it out, here it is. I don't know if it's in tune. I don't know what the positive grid spark is, Sai. 
Now I gotta. Now I'm gonna have to Google something. Technically, oh, is that an octave mandolin? Uh, up there. That's a twelve string. In fact, I gotta pack that up for my session today. Um, yeah, not, it's not very much in tune, probably. Sadly. Tune. I gotta tune it up. Also, the strings are getting old. Uh, but yeah, I've I've used it. I basically bought it to use because uh, I do a lot of games. I play on a lot of games. Um, should I say it, Gary? <laughs> Gary's like, I'm thirsty. Tom, say it. I played all the guitars on Apex Legends. So if you if you're a gamer and you know Apex Legend, that's me on guitar um, and bass. Um, but I, I work for another composer named Austin Wintry and he, he oftentimes writes a lot of mandolin stuff and a lot of times he writes it below the range of the mandolin. So I bought that. So I had something I could play that would sound, <laughs> say it, say it, <laughs> Ollie. Um, basically, uh, the, I, well, for me, so the reason I learned a lot of instruments is because when you do a session, I don't really do a lot of union sessions, but um, but when you do a union set, if you're working on a movie or TV show, it's always good to, if you can get double calls. So if you, if you, um, if you double an instrument, like in other words, if I play acoustic guitar on a session and I pull out a mandolin, um, then, um, and I play mandolin, then you get a 20% bump for the day. And if you pull out another instrument, you get another 15%. And if you pull out another instrument, you get another 15 I don't know why they call it a double, because I would think if it was going to be a double, you should get 100% more. But essentially, they have to pay you because they're not paying a mandolin player. So they're paying you to play mandolin. So they have to pay you more. Uh, so that's kind of the motivation behind learning how to play other instruments. Uh, plus, I would I just like playing them. Uh, my wife and I had a record, and I, I wanted we were kind of doing kind of a pseudo alt country rock thing, and I wanted mandolin. So I uh, actually the mandolin came about because, and here's a story. Um, uh, but the mandolin came about because um, I had a, a friend of mine, uh, this guy I knew that I really wanted to work for. He was a composer, and he asked me if I played mandolin, and I said yes, <laughs> and I didn't. I lied. And I said, when's the session? He said, day after tomorrow. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I went to my other friend's house and he had a, I said, can I, you know, buy your, can I, do you have a mandolin? You know, he, he said he would sell me his mandolin for 50 bucks. So I bought his mandolin for 50 bucks. I took it home, literally spent, and this is before the internet. So no YouTube, no, you know, any, no Wikipedia, nothing. Um, I think I, I, I think I already knew how a mandolin was tuned. Uh, so I just started mapping it out and going, okay, here's how you play a G chord. Here's how you play a C chord, blah, blah, blah. And so mandolin was probably the first instrument I added to my arsenal that wasn't played like a guitar. And um, a lot of session guys back in the day would tune the mandolin, for example, like a guitar and their banjo like a guitar and all that. I refuse to do that. I actually want to learn the instrument as it's supposed to be tuned because there are certain idiomatic things on the mandolin that you can do that you cannot do on guitar. I talk about this all the time. Triads are really hard to, to play fast on the guitar, but on mandolin, they're like playing a pentatonic lick. It's super easy. So um, so there's certain things that I really, really love about the mandolin and other times I don't, but, but basically I, <laughs> I played the, I played the, you know, I got to the session. I was so nervous. Oh my gosh, I was nervous. And he says, okay, here's what I want you to do. Pretty much that was the session. <laughs> so I, in two days, I was overqualified for the gig. So uh, that kind of started my thing. And so what I did, John, for, gosh, about 10 years, every year I would buy an instrument I didn't have. I got a lap steel. 
Um, I got a banjo. Um, I got a ukulele. I'm still doing it. I mean, but I probably get more than one a year now. And then learn that instrument. So it was my my goal was to not only um, buy the instrument, but learn it. And now in the internet age, it's a lot easier to kind of Oh, okay. That's how you play a balalaika. You know, I didn't realize. You know, and so I got a balalaika now, and um, and and so for a lot of games, uh, you know, a lot of the games I, I, I was working on, uh, well, I was doing something that uh, was I was playing the Lord of the Rings, and um, I can't say what game it's for, but it, it was Lord of the Rings themes, uh, the same score, and I was adding guitars to it and mandolins, and I was adding that bowed psaltery, which you saw me get the bowed thing. Um, and so that's, it's just anything you can do to give your, the people, the client, your clients added value is appreciated. And when you're appreciated, you're hired. So, so that's it. Now we're, we were talking about, uh, yes. I, oh, uh, Zeke, 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 uh, sorry. I did a series. Let's see here. Uh, soloing i did a series in here you can check out on soloing and i'm not i don't even remember what i talked about but here was the lesson yeah I, bruce i just posted so lesson 117 through 121 was i kind of talked about soloing but it's literally i mean i don't know that I, I don't think i can post all of this i think there's a reason but uh i would one of the things i'm a big proponent of is um See how much can we get? Uh, I got some. Yeah, I got some stuff there. Um, window washing machine. Okay. Um, the uh, one of the things that I think is really good for uh, improving your soloing is is to is to be aware of, and I talk about this all the time. The the caged method, the caged shapes that. Um, the uh, C, A, G, D, and E. And as you see those shapes up and down the neck, like when I'm playing an E minor, for example, and I, I don't know. Um, I'm seeing this E minor shape right here. I can see this E minor shape. Now I'm seeing this E minor shape. So I'm seeing shapes up and down the neck, and I've, I've got scales and pentatonic scales built around each one of those shapes. So that is a great way to help with your soloing if you're not already doing it. Yeah, so, you know, again, I'm just, I'm just seeing shapes up and down the neck, and it doesn't have to be complex shapes. I can even see relative major shapes. So if, I, if I'm playing in a key of E minor like that, just that's just a chord E minor. It's not even a, really, I wouldn't even call that a jam. If I'm playing in uh, the chord E minor, um, uh, hold on a second, the, um, Uh, the relative major is G. So I can see all my G shapes all over the neck and know that I can play in G, um, maybe, but land on E's more than G's. <laughs> it's that, you know, maybe that simple. But generally, I'm not just, when I'm soloing, I'm not just like, I'm not, usually you have a solo, it's over a progression, it's in a song, and you've got to kind of make a, You've got to have you've got to have a flow to it. You've got to have like 
a build, you got to create some tension and you got to release the tension and then you finish out or whatever. Or you, you create a theme, you know, you have some kind of, maybe that's your theme. So you play off that, you play off of that a little bit and you kind of do like Beethoven would, a theme and variations. Um, and that makes a better solo than just learning a bunch of, you know, scales. You know, that's cool, that's flashy, but it's like, so? <laughs> that kind of solo bores me. I mean, you know, and I'm a guitar player for life, and it's like that, you know, when I see guys just shredding like that, it's like, yeah, whatever. T say something. That's like just reciting the alphabet really fast. That's You're not actually telling me anything new. Uh, so, so in that regard, I, you know, every young person wants to be the fastest guitar player in the world. Uh, but then the older you get, I don't know if it, for me, it was just nobody ever paid me to play fast. People wanted melodic guitar solos. They don't want shreddy guitar solos for the most part. Occasionally, I've been asked for, you know, crazy shreddy guitar solos, but not in a long time. And, you know, oh, actually, you know, two weeks ago. <laughs> so it's been two weeks since I've had it. But that was for a video game. And it was one of, you know, it wasn't like, a, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it was, we were making fun of that kind of stuff. And it was like, I had to do like, they, they wanted to literally, you know, they wanted me to do two handed stuff and all that. I'm like, Oh my God, I had to dust off a bunch of old licks. Uh, but that's just pretty rare. Most of the time you want to create people want, if they want to solo in a song, they want something that is, is nice, you know? Um, yeah. So Kevin, don't give up. Uh, I, and one of the best ways to get bet good fast is to jam with other players, especially better players. Find a drummer and a bass player and another guitar player and put together a band and just start jamming. Uh, you will go to those, you will practice more than you've ever practiced afterwards and right before because you'll be like, oh man, I don't want to make a fool of myself. The fear of making a fool of yourself is a huge motivator. Like, for example, when I did that mandolin session. I probably didn't sleep for the 48 hours before I did that session and was so overprepared for that session because I did my homework. Anytime I've done my homework, uh, it's paid dividends. Any Anytime I've really got like prepared for a meeting or prepared for a session or prepared for a writing thing or a gig, uh, you know, anytime I took something for granted, I'm, I, I don't learn anything new and I may be mess up. And so anytime I go into a, a new session, a new situation and particularly really prepared, I tend to impress myself as well as everybody else. And that's the goal. You got to keep working. Uh, every gig I treat, this is the thing. I treat every job, every gig I do as a job interview. Okay. So I treat everything. I, every time I go to work, I've got a session after this, um, Today, uh, I've got a, 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 it's for a commercial, um, and I'm working this week with, um, on, on a bunch of, with a bunch of the top pop producers and artists, um, or pop producers and writers uh, in music right now, and um, we're writing songs uh, for an artist. And um, so that's, uh, you know, I'm going there as prepared as I can go. I bring, I bring my A game. But I try to bring my A game everywhere. I try to do that out of respect, even if it's a, a D gig. <laughs> I try to bring my A game. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Caleb Cole. So, Tom, do you play Clawhammer banjo? No, I don't. Uh, the banjo thing, I, yeah, it's, I'm more Scruggs if I'm anything. Uh, I, I, I'm really... Not a great banjo player, okay? I'm going to be completely honest with you on that. If I actually did, you know, I wouldn't play. I would probably, man, I have played in a bluegrass band, but they were like a bunch of old guys that we were just messing around with bluegrass. Not a legit thing. I've gotten calls for legit banjo gigs, and I've given other numbers. In fact, I just got called for one. Um, it was for uh, it was for a TV show, and it was I, I had them send me the music. I said, send me the music. Let me see if I can... If it's too hard or not. And they go, oh, it's probably not too hard. You, you could do it because people think I can do anything. And then I got the music and I said, yeah, this is, I tried. I really tried. In fact, I saved it because I wanted to go, okay, let me practice this. And the guy, the composer was using a banjo sample. So he didn't want to, he didn't want to hear the band. It was a cartoon. He didn't want to hear the, because it was solo banjo. If it were with a bunch of other stuff going on, 
then probably I could he wouldn't have been so busy and I probably could have covered it. But because it was like the cartoon character was walking around with a banjo for this long scene, like 10 minutes, and he kept doing these little 20 second snippets. Some of them were like ripping fast. and It was electric guitar, no problem. But on banjo, you know, and I, I have my banjo tuned like a banjo. So uh, I and I, Caleb, I don't know how to say your name, Caleb or Caleb or Colt, whatever. Uh, uh, Casey, I worked on the claw hammer a little bit. I did some guitar, uh, some lessons on YouTube, like watching it. How, and, and then I, I don't practice it and I forget. But it's such a cool vibe. I want to do claw hammer. And there's another name for it, too. I can't think what it's called. Um, someday I'll work on it. Maybe when I'm retired and I'm just practicing for fun, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get claw hammer down. I, I wish I had, a, you know, a thousand lifetimes so I could dedicate each lifetime to a different style of music. Because uh, that's really, really to be legit in any of the styles, you almost have to do that. So I'm so illegitimate, <laughs> except in birth. Um, yeah, so practice, practice uh, routines. Um, that would be a good one. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. I missed that. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, share some practice routines. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Um, that we can talk about that. Um, you're self-taught. Okay. In two months in, I've already learned Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Yeah. It's the, 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 I can tell you one thing about banjo. The number one thing you want to work on are, uh, the banjo rolls, which is the banjo term for finger picking patterns, uh, banjo rolls. Uh, forwards rolls, backwards rolls, inside out rolls, all those different rolls. And that's really where it starts because the, you, the good, t the, you, if you don't even have a left hand, you can play a G chord, you know, on a banjo. So, cause it's tuned to G. Um, so you, you know, a lot of guys are, you watch their left hand and they're just hammering on notes and maybe occasionally playing a chord or whatever, like a D chord or whatever. Um, but it's more like hammer. It's, it's very quick, you know, subtle stuff on the left hand, the right hand's doing all the work. So that's what I've noticed about banjo. So if you, if you get a bunch of banjo rolls down, and that's my problem, is when I'm playing banjo, I've got about three or four rolls that I go to, and it just gets a little, to listen to me play banjo is a little boring. Funny, though, a producer said, I uh, was talking about Taylor Swift and the banjo in Taylor Swift's early records. Um, the banjo is kind of the uh, the sequencer of country music. <laughs> you know, in synth, in, in pop music, they have a sequence, you play it, hold down a keyboard, and it'll sequence and randomize the notes in that's what a sequencer does uh, uh in pop music and in electronic music and in hip-hop and stuff and b banjo is kind of like that the banjo is like this it's constantly going so solid eighth notes just constantly going like a sequencer and then the notes just si slightly change because you're changing notes like you would on a keyboard um so that's another thing about the banjo that that how i use it primarily is to try to create a bed of harmony underneath something. So, uh, but then I have a six, I have several banjos. I have a six string that I use if I've got someone that wants the banjo sound, but they want, you know, like, they want these weird random, whatever, you know, it's, it could be, you know, it could be, uh, it could be that, what the fit, the dominant Phrygian mode or whatever. Uh, if they want something like that, then I'm probably going to pull out the banjo guitar so I can just have a banjo. It sounds like a banjo, but it's played like a guitar. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm a lot of new people on today. It's so crazy. I mean, people retracting their messages. And a, re a practice request. I should do a whole series on it. Um, it's, practicing is, is something that I, ha I had to force myself to do when I was a kid. And then as I decided I wanted to do it for a living, it did, I didn't have to force myself to do it, but I really had to force myself to go through some boring stuff um, and get the time in. So, you know, um, so I, I often say from the age of 15 to the age of 35, I practiced eight hours a day, which isn't entirely true. Obviously, it's kind of an exaggeration, but I would even take the guitar on vacation and I would practice. And so I had... Particularly in my early 20s, I had a classical guitar routine that I went through, you know, doing the Segovia scales and the Giuliani arpeggios and then repertoire. Um, and then I was doing jazz scales and, you know, learning bebop songs, um, writing, trying to figure out country, you know, country licks and things like that. And then what I gravitated towards eventually was writing songs that were 
were working some skill that I wanted to have. Okay, so I would write a song, and the guitar part would be something that I didn't have the skills to play yet. Um, so I would work up the skill. So I have so at the end I would have two things. I would have a song, and I would have some new skills. I would have something that I could market. Now, that, I, you know, I don't think I sold many of these songs. Um, but it, I got in the habit of writing and producing and recording myself and and spending as much time with the red light on, which means recording, as possible so that when I'm in the situation where I've got the red light on in a real session, uh, like I have later today, I'm not nervous, you know, and so I feel like I'm, it's a comfortable place for me. So, uh, but I'll be happy to... Um, yeah, exactly. I also have a four-string banjo, which is a tenor banjo. Um, I also have a banjo lele. So I think I have four ba four banjo esque. I've got four instruments with banjo heads. So let's put it that way. <laughs> so, uh, and my banjo, my my tenor banjo is 1920 Gibson. I got a really old one. I found it at a store. I thought it was cool. I bought it. I've maybe used it twice. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, I have a million lessons, and if you go to, if, in fact, let me put a link to the Discord right now. If you go there, and if you're not a troll, I mean, if you go there and you start trolling people, they're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna kick you off, okay? Just so you know, so don't be a troll. We're trying to support each other. We're all trying to help each other learn here, and there are a lot of people there with a brain trust that's bigger than mine. So, uh, here's a Discord link that should not expire. <clears throat> Yeah, I yeah I play lead guitar and acoustic guitar at my church too. So, um, in fact, this weekend we're doing an acoustic weekend. So I may bring my, I, I have to see the keys, but I'll probably bring my mandolin, my twelve string, a six string, uh, dobro, dulcimer. Bring, I'll bring like five or six. We're only doing three songs, so I'll bring five or six instruments, and then once I decide what instrument to use, um, I will uh, use that one for the song, and then put the others away. So. Um, for the song, so, uh, which she wore me down until at last she made the final, <laughs> the core, <laughs> the final, <laughs> so the end of the day, there you go. <laughs> the file, <laughs> see, we, re we can write a love song with file, we're going to have like, so yeah, I mean, you can, you know, uh, you could take any word and, and try to turn it into a love song. I don't know that it'll work. You could say cup, but uh, cup, you know, what, how can cup be about his love, about love? All right. I don't have time for a story right now. In fact, I don't even know if I have any stories left. I've told all of my stories, uh, 129 lessons. Uh, but I, there were stories in there, kind of. Um, it's not necessary, Sally, to get trained in classical music. No, I, I did because that's that was the only major you could I could major at, at Butler. Oh, here's my shirt. See, that's where I went to school, um, and so there, there was no other guitar study there. It was only classical guitar, so I didn't have a choice. Um, but I enjoyed it and, um, I, I used it, made money. I played a lot of weddings and stuff. I don't do it anymore. Uh, I, I just not worth my time. The, 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 keeping the repertoire up takes time. You've got to practice that alone, probably a couple hours a day just to keep your repertoire up. And it's, you know, people aren't willing to pay for that. So I'm not, I'm huge. Oh, a file is a, is a time. Interesting. Well, that explains Time. Okay, a file. That's interesting. See, so that song would be nothing in America. <laughs> People are like, what's he talking about? <laughs> All right, well, it's crazy. We had a lot of people here. I mean, I think we peaked at 50, 55. Unbelievable. I don't know what happened. It suddenly boosted around an hour in. We went from 30s to 50s and 40s. It's crazy. So I'm not sure why, but people were logging in all over the world, too, which is cool. So uh, take care. Friday, uh, I may do the I may do the pentatonic. I mean, I'm sorry, the um, the mixolydian, the three mixolydian thing. Uh, maybe I may do that. I think I think I think you would think it was fun. I've got to you know, I've got to create a, a blues person. But, you know, the, the thing is, I'm going to be forced to make you uh, 
jam on that blues progression for a good long time. Let me see. Where is that um, video? Because I did do a video on that, right? Uh, where is it? Uh, videos. How long ago did I do that blues video, though? It's been a while. Uh, was whenever we did the blues lesson, I, I created a blues video. Here we go. 12 bar blues in E. I'm probably not going to do E. Uh, but it wouldn't hurt. Do I have to? Kill. Oh, sorry. Welcome to my. Um, oh, okay. Skip that. Did I, did I, I didn't write the chord. So, but I mean, if you can jam along with this, um, you can. You can start to get, you know, the, the goal is to play the blues without making 10 times in a row without messing up. Because you, when, um, no one will jam with you if you can't, you know, no one will jam the blues with you if you can't do it consistently. If you screw up and make it 11 bars one time and 13 bars the next time, or um, if you forget to go to the five chord, or if you go to the six chord instead of the five chord, or whatever. Those things that people are not going to, they can't, they can't really solo over that because they can't trust you to be in the right place at the right time. So if you jam along with that, um, those chords are, the chords are written there. If you get a sense of when it changes, but then it also it's huge because then it, if you got it nailed and it's in here so that you can never forget the blues progression, then when it comes time to solo, no chord will take you by surprise. You'll be able to go right to it. Okay. In fact, I think. I mean, you could jam along with this, but more importantly would be that that the video I just posted. More importantly would be to rhythm to jam along with it rhythmically. Okay, so we'll talk more. Uh, maybe we'll see some of you on Friday. Okay, Friday nine. Um, I am going to probably Friday may be limited day. I've got a lot of things I got to do. It's our anniversary, so I've got a fuller. And uh, I don't think I'm going to go to the writing, but tomorrow I'm going to be writing, so uh, I can pray that that all goes well. But I'm glad to see all of you. Uh, really good turnout today. Impressive. You guys are stepping up. Oh, shoot. Buffering.